bringing this situation along as much as it could throughout this week. We understand that with this virus, there are many uncontrollables, and one of them is whether or not we'll continue to have further spread within an organization. As we know, as recently as last night, Lamar Jackson, amongst the four Ravens players that they learned about as new positive. So the game gets bumped back to Sunday at 115 and then bumped back once more until Tuesday. When we take a big step back, Laura, the NFL remains intent on playing every regular season game within 17 weeks. If that means that they're going to have to kick the can down the road a little bit with some of the week-to-week scheduling, they will. So there is a trickle-down impact. Of course, the Ravens were scheduled to play this upcoming Thursday. It is in one week from Thanksgiving. That game now off the table to be played on Thursday. The Ravens will instead most likely have to play the Cowboys as soon as the following Sunday. But in terms of the most important Week 12 ramifications, the Steelers and Ravens game has not been postponed entirely. There's no Week 18 entering the NFL chatter right now. It's being moved until Tuesday. And as has been discussed, while a forfeit might be something that's going to percolate into this conversation. A forfeiture of a game could cost players on both sides their salaries. At the end of the day, everybody wants this game played. It will be played on Tuesday. Yeah, thank you for that update. And as you can see on the screen there, Adam Schefter and Diana Russini reporting at least 12 cases amongst players. Lamar Jackson, the starting quarterback for the Ravens, reported to be among them. We've got so much more to get to today, and we'll continue to monitor that Ravens situation. But we welcome you to NFL Live, and we're thankful to be with everybody. Ryan Clark is dancing because he's outside. More on that in moments. Marcus Spears is here, and Mina Kimes, of course. And there's a lot that we are going to be paying attention to with Week 12. But let's begin with the news that's just come Coming down right now. And Marcus, I'll start with you. You know, as a player, when you're hearing all of this news and you're trying to adjust and prepare for a game, how do you prepare now with another game change, an extra day involved here, a couple days involved? Well, listen, as a player, obviously, you know, in an unconventional year that this possibility is happening and the Steelers are going through this once. But I want to shout out Mike Tomlin because this is the way that the Pittsburgh Steelers are built. He doesn't he doesn't make room for built in excuses. He doesn't try to find any reason why their performance shouldn't be elite. And that's going to help this team, especially. Isn't it ironic that they're the team that that's been through this twice now? Like when you think about what the Pittsburgh Steelers franchise and organization is built on it's the fact that they they perform at their level even in a year last year without being Roethlisberger there was no excuses coming out of that place about how they should play and what the expectations were and then as an individual player are you kidding me like a game getting postponed twice you still got to think about the possibility of it getting canceled you got to think about the possibility of not getting a check you got to think about the possibility of possibly getting COVID all of those possibilities is the way we are talking about this NFL season. And unfortunately, this is what the Pittsburgh Steelers have had to go through, as well as the Ravens and the Titans and any other team, all 32 teams, I would say, with with that idea that they won't be able to play a game because of COVID-19. This this one felt different. I didn't know that we would get to this point where this game could be played on Tuesday. But the fact that the league is intent on getting it done, and obviously the testing is going to continue, I still don't feel 100% confident that it's going to happen without new new COVID situations coming up with the Baltimore Ravens. Welcome to the real world, though, right? Like, this is the real world. Marcus mentioned cancellations. Marcus mentioned postponements. Marcus mentioned people not getting checks. That's the real world. That's what everybody else in society is dealing with, whether you play football, whether you work at a restaurant, whether you own a restaurant, if you own a building, organizations, whatever you are a part of right now in this society, this is your reality. And so even though I understand the Pittsburgh Steelers have had to deal with this adversity, there's also adversity in testing positive. There's adversity in everything that you deal with when it comes to COVID-19. And so we understood when the NFL rolled out its schedule with the 16 games, trying to keep the status quo, wanting to find its champion the way it finds its champion every year, that this was going to be part of it. And so, yes, it is ironic that it's the Pittsburgh Steelers twice. It's also ironic that this is the team that coach builds his team based on the standard being the standard, based on the next man being up, and they understand how to deal with this situation. 
But this is 2020, y'all. This is our reality. Yeah. This is their reality. Yeah. This game is supposed to be played Tuesday, and it might be, but it might not be. But isn't that it? That's where we are. So we'll see what happens going forward. I think that's the right attitude, Ryan. You know, like We just have to recognize the context in which all of this is happening. This isn't about arguing about fairness and the Patriots had to play without one player. This is about public health. It's about a crisis. It's about deferring to the health experts on these issues. Um, Steelers linebacker Vince William tweeted, I just want all of them boys to recover and be healthy. And a credit to him because I think that is the right attitude. That's the primary concern everyone should have in all of this. Now, that said, we are having to address the many, many secondary concerns with regards to the season and the competition and how to finish this thing fairly. It is unfair to the Steelers that they've been put in this position so many times that they don't want to forfeit because they want to get paid. They deserve to get paid regardless of what happens. But right now the NFL's concern is making sure, okay, we get through the season, we get to the playoffs, we let everyone have a fair shot at the postseason it's not going to be a win-win-win for every team involved. We're just trying no. to get through it. Um, you know, hopefully they can figure it out. It might involve extending the season. I think that's a contingency we all got to be, be prepared for, but I wouldn't be surprised if it comes to that. Yeah, you heard Phil Yates off the top of the show saying right now there's not an appetite for that Week 18 conversation, but certainly all of us keeping our eyes very close to that and all of these storylines. There's a lot to get to, though, for Week 12, and that's all coming your way. Ryan, give us a little preview. What are you paying attention to? Listen, this is Ryan Clark reporting live outside of Tempe, Arizona, and I'm too worried about Taysom Hill. Listen, this is week two. They have a little bit of film on him. They know what type of offense that they're going to run in New Orleans. It's not going to be a Wildcat. It's not going to be Colin Kaepernick, Lamar Jackson. It's going to be Drew Brees, but swole up and fast. And so what's the next step that Vic Fangio and his defense takes against Taysom Hill, and how will he adjust? All right, so apparently Mr. Trubisky is now playing quarterback for the Chicago Bears, but really is going to come down this Bears defense as it has so many times to try to stop Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers has been fantastic this year, but when he's under pressure, his passer rating drops from second in the NFL to 16th in the NFL. Khalil Mack, you're going to have to win this game for your team. Yeah, and look, the story is going to be about Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady, but I'm going to go Tampa Bay's defense, who back in has a tendency to have their eyes in the wrong place, and this is not the week to do it. This is not the time to do it, Tampa Bay's defense. So, Todd Bowles, secondary, don't get carved up like a turkey thinking that you're going to keep your eyes in that backfield and pick off Patrick Mahomes because he just going to somehow throw it to you. It will be bombs all over the place, and the scoreboard will be crazy if you play that way. You heard Mina mention it, Mitchell Trubisky.